Welcome to the Lost Signals Discusses Literature, where we apply the revolutionary mutt skill to classic and contemporary works of prose. So, join us once again, won't you? Hello there, welcome back to Lost Signals Discusses Literature, and I am Scott Thurlow, and I have never chosen to know the date of my death. I am here with Stephen Amosi. I've never been given the option. <laughs> Too poor. And Chris Morgan. Hello. And Jonathan Ian Manzer. I already passed the date of my death. <laughs> <laughs> You're already expired. And uh, given all that, we're doing a short story called uh, Knowers by Helen Phillips. And again, sort of like a random roulette. I found it um, on a list of like highly rated like good short stories from a couple years ago within the past five years or so. Originally from Electric, or at least was published in Electric Literature. And uh, I, I just I really yeah. want a title of a, a combination being good short stories from a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's essentially what it is. You know? Sometimes when we don't have anything else like uh, specific to choose, we just do a, do a little roulette. And that's what we've done. So with that, um, does anyone have a log line? If not, I think I have one. It's just uh, how long do I live? Four years? <clears throat> More than you. So if you get that reference, good on you. It's not the best one, but it's what I've got. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I will also do the plot. So it's like sort of vaguely um, future sci-fi-ish where the premise is you can, the government has like a very, like an ATM-like thing that will, you go there and you put in your information and it will tell you your date of death. And there's a couple, um, I'm not even sure if the, um, the narrator is even named, but she is married to a man named Tem and she decides that she wants to know her date of death and it kind of causes a bit of a divide, sort of the vision and the relationship. They're probably, they're, I think they're actually 30 or 31. I think it's very specific in the story. I don't remember the actual age, but it's something like that. She decides to go know it and then live, they live their life. She never tells him what it is, although obviously she remembers it. And they live their life for another, the next 30, 40 years for whatever the date in the future is. And it sort of ends like not in a cliffhanger. Like they have children and their children have it. She has a grandchild. So like she gets to have that experience. Like she just lives life to you know uh, not hedonism per se but to enjoy it so sorry steve do you want to i was gonna say she doesn't actually get to see her grandchild she knows that her grandchild will be born no not true she has one grandchild she has one grandchild right right. one is born and the other one is coming like three or four months after like her supposed date of death and and it is um april 17th is the day of her death so like yeah she tells her husband that it's April 17th, but she doesn't tell, like he stops her before she tells him what year. So he never know. like every April 17th, he's like, this could be the last one, you know? Yeah. And it becomes a thing. So like, yeah, like it's, that's basically it. Like it's sort of, a, I don't know, a softer sci-fi ish, like, you know, thought experiment about like, it, what if you were able to know the date of your death and it ends on like, not a cliffhanger per se, but like Indeter- unde- indeterminate yeah. ending. Yeah, like exactly, like a waiver, like almost a like Twilight Zone ending. She has six minutes until the day is over. In theory, right. So yeah, it, it actually does remind me quite a bit of a Twilight Zone thing. But overall, like for the plot itself, it's a neat premise. It's not like something you haven't seen done before. But I think maybe this will come out, will come through in further questions. I think it's solidly done. I was engaged throughout. And yes, it's a short story. And that's kind of the whole point. But for what it is, I'm looking at either a very strong two or it could be convinced of a three. I'm wavering upon it. So that's my initial thought. So what do you guys think? She actually celebrates Happy Death Day as well. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm, I'm aiming at it too because I actually think it's an exploration for a theme that we're going to discuss mm, later. Certainly. Uh, more so than a narrative. And, uh, and even though the ending was engaging uh, quite a bit, uh, it kind of just the sum of someone's life, and that sum is a two. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of okay. feel the think? same way. I, I think it's going to be a two. It is more of a vehicle for the themes that they that the author uh, Helen Phillips wants to go for than um, than like really a. a a plot device, a story unto itself. Yeah. You're saying, yeah. you know, it, it, you know, it is. It's it, it is fine as as far as the story goes. It's a strong two, but I don't think it goes so far as to be like a masterful plot. You know, like I think that it is a lot hangs on the themes of this, which 
granted are very good, but I, I think I'm going to give it a, a two for the story. There were several parts that I really loved, um, but I thought there were parts that weren't were fine, but weren't like you know like outstanding. And and that's that's fine. It was it was all like in um, service to in service to, to the theme, I think, and the character. What do you think, Chris? Beginning and and the rest was just life. Um, so <laughs> I, so I, I'm gonna I agree with you guys. I'm gonna give it a two because that's what you guys were saying. Basically, you had these two landmark things, and then everything else was just the. What is um, life? Exploration of that is life. <laughs> possibly the theme. Yeah. So I think yeah, I think I'll, I'll I'll follow suit with a two, a stronger two, uh, certainly to be to be sure, but. Not quite enough for a three, but it's solid enough. And yeah, and speaking of that, perhaps the maybe the most important part or the heart of it is the theme. So, Stevo, go on with that. So, I mean, this is like the theme of the the terrifying nature of death, I guess, and like demystifying it. And I, I think that this story does a great job of like talking about like what people's fears are especially this this character's fears are about about death and whether or not knowing the moment of your death is better or worse than not knowing right like that's that's the most important thing right is like what what is the difference between knowing and not knowing the moment of your death like how does that let you celebrate days if you know it how does it let you celebrate days differently and if you don't know it, how does that, you know, well, mindset and mindset. like uh, because you you get both takes on this because her husband a doesn't know his own death like date whatever so he could die like long before her he doesn't know uh, turns out he doesn't spoiler but um, he also doesn't know the year of her death but he does know the date so like April seventh. Yeah is the date of her death and it's like really fascinating like look at it through his eyes like he hates this day she celebrates it every year that she's not going to die because well, and she's like she starts a small like, she's like at first i bought myself like a small little gift or whatever and like as it went on as we got older yeah, and and it was like more, more elaborate like yeah. it's almost like a, a holiday unto itself exactly and like he yeah. does he like he goes along with it because you know he loves her but he also hates that day right like it, it's it's made very clear that he like yeah despises that like they celebrate that instead of her birthday you know like basically yeah. throughout her life and um i think i think it's really fascinating to like look at the the different ways that people approach things like knowing and not knowing these like really important things um and I think that's the point of this story. I think that's really the the heart of what this story is about. And I think it does a really good job of of showing those themes from both angles. Or, and um, yeah, so like uh, that's kind of what I that's kind of what I think about it. What do you guys think? Oh, I thought it was an interesting exploration, and they even like kind of lampshade the bits of like. She's more daring now that she knows she's not going to die. So yeah. She's not doing things like running into war zones or anything like that. Uh, uh, but I'll budgie jump. Why not? Uh, I think it's fascinating. To- I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think it's fascinating that she said, like, you know, g- given what's going on right now, during a pandemic, she... Uh, I remember that line. Yeah. She, like, went to the hospital <laughs> and, like, and volunteered to the hospital. Like, it, I was like, oh, wow. That's, that's interesting. Like, you know, like, that specific thing happened in this story that we're reading right now. Yeah, and I believe this story is from like 2013, like not too far ago, but certainly before all this. So yeah, it's a nice little like inclusion. Good. Uh, but uh, I think it's uh, a fascinating uh, existential question about, and I think what's really important is that you know when, but you don't know how. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that is a level of uncertainty, even though you're certain. To, so who knows? You could be in a coma for uh, 40 years and then pass away on that date. Uh, so it's, there is that level of uh, still, it's not just daredevil dumb. There's actually a, uh, a, a, an excuse for that expiration. Mm. Uh, but I do have something to say to, when we're almost complete. So I'll let you guys go. Good, Chris. Uh, 
I was just thinking while we were talking, it was like, well, I don't know if it would be more cynical approach to this thing, but a more uh, darker comedy where you would have the, you know, well, you know, her date, but like nobody else knows her date and everybody dies around her, <laughs> uh, leading to her. I had time now. That would be Twilight yeah. Zone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But um, yeah, I agree with you guys. I'm really nothing else to add. I'm, I, 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 I thought it was a fascinating thing. And anything that gives you more questions and answers, gives you more to ponder, more to discuss, if you were to, just, to do discuss the themes in this, I think makes the themes valid. So give them Yeah, more. I mean, I think the existential idea of it is in fact the core of it. It's based around that. And I think that means like, if I said this like previously, but it lives or dies out upon it. I think in this case, it does quite well. So I think we're all giving it once. All right. So question time. Would you do it? I probably would, to be honest with you, dudes. Uh, I don't know. I think I would need to know that it was real before that, right? Like, it was legit. At, the end, at the end of the story, this is, this is actually something that I was thinking about talking about later, but I think that fits in themes as well. Um, at the end of the story, it ends like six minutes before midnight, right. yeah. and she's still alive. And it's like, am I going to die? And it's like, listen, you've had at minimum like 30 or 40 years or whatever it is since she got the thing to know if there are false positives, right, on this. So, like, you know for sure if everyone else has died at that on that day that you're going to die in the next six minutes, right? In theory, in university. But 12 o'clock when? I mean, are we on East Coast time, Pacific time? It's also, she Something? mentioned it could have been a bureaucratic error. Yeah. Right. Probably got uh, someone else to take it. But that but, seems like... You know, that seems like uh, your own mind trying to find it out, you know, <laughs> more than anything else. Um, so, I don't know. I, I thought that was interesting. It was like, you know, her trying to find like an out on it. Like, oh, maybe I won't die. Maybe I won't die. And like, because it's gotten so late, maybe I won't die. And like, you know, I see this as like this character dies in the next six minutes at the end of the story, but it is left open. So you don't really know. Maybe it is. Maybe it was a bureaucrat. She, no, she dies from a panic attack of worrying how she's going to die. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Also, it's Twilight Zone. Bureaucracy killed her. Um, in, ter- I, in, terms of, in terms of your question, Ian, I'm sorry to, to go so far afield. Um, I'm not sure if I would do it or not. I would need to actually have the option as opposed to like it being a thought. I don't think you'd do it. I mean, they have the option. I'm saying right now, right here, I'd say no. I wouldn't do it because I don't want to know. But if Beth was with me and there was a whole thing, I, <laughs> it's that, but no, it's like she was with her husband at the beginning and he told her he didn't want her to do it and she did it and they had a huge fight. So mm-hmm. it depends because being asked that, I would without question be with Beth and you know I would say no. So it would be, it would be contingent upon the argument and the resolution of that argument we would have. <laughs> All right. Would you do it, E? Absolutely. And the reason why is uh, I had a moment like that uh, when I was under the influence of LSD when I was a younger uh, kid. Sure. And uh, I, I saw myself in the future and it was very comforting. I actually find uh, would find because I am aware that life we're mortal. I'm going to die. And I find, I find comfort in that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like it. It's a good right, So yeah. one's all around for themes. Yep, it's a good extra question, which I think we're giving it a one four. And uh, someone speaking, maybe it's related. Chris, what is what is who or what is the antagonist in the story? <laughs> I was going to say, I, I, I at this point, I'm not really sure, 100. percent I mean, you can you can say the antagonist is the foreknowledge of death or approximate foreknowledge of death, barring any uh, bureaucratic uh, miscalculations. <laughs> um, but there is, it is one of those things where the antagonist is, and I don't mean this in a negative way, but manufactured between the characters. In other words, it, it wasn't an antagonist to her, but it was her, her husband, and it became something she embraced, but also that was an antagonist. So I think, I think, I don't, th- I, I don't think antagonism is one thing. I mean, you guys correct me, and I'm going to give it a one because obviously that's what kept the story going. Um, but I don't really think it's anything you could say 
you know, it's death or knowing the death. I think it's, I think the antagonist is in the perspective of the characters at any given time. I, I was going to say, I almost, I almost disagree. I think that, and by I almost disagree, I mean, I do disagree. <laughs> All right. Not, let's not be. Let's not split hairs. Um, I think that the driving force of this story is um, the main character's optimism for life, and like knowing her death, but knowing that that means that she has this much life to live, and I think that that is the important part of what's going on in the story. I'm not sure there even is an antagonist. I guess like you could call it knowledge but and like the knowledge of of when you're gonna die but like i don't think that's an antagonist i'm not sure that there is an antagonist to this story it doesn't feel like any of these characters are running from anything in fact well, they're like moving towards each other i think i actually believe that tim uh, her husband is antagonized throughout the entire thing uh yeah. by the fact that he kind of knows uh, uh, but doesn't know and I, but the, he's not the main character. And I kind of agree with you on that point, Steve. Yeah. I, I mean, like, the, so it's an interesting thing about Tim. Like, I feel like he is freaked out for sure. But I think that at least in, in terms of how the story is told by the main character, the, the woman who is uh, actually has the knowledge, I feel like it pushes them together more than like antagonizes them. Despite the fact that, like, you know, like, he is driven closer to her by the fact that she knows when she's going to die, almost. And, like, I, I don't, I could see how that's, like, an antagonism on his end, but it's not an antagonist in a, like, in a real way in the story, I guess. It's an antagonist, like, outside of the story of, uh, on him, I suppose. No, you're right, you're right, Ian. The one who is antagonized is Tam. It's not the... So yes, the inter the in my my interpretation of it. No, that was actually coming from Tim. So yeah, switch mine to a zero, dude. Okay. I mean, I don't know, dudes, because I think I'm pretty fairly in a one camp that like it sort of wavers. It walks that tightrope where like, yeah, because of the like I think it's a good um stylistic choice, which we'll get to, but like for her to know and him to know the date but not the year, like that's a very important detail to me, mm -hmm. which creates a lot of tension. Mm -hmm. And like so, like she, the, the narrator herself admits that she's antagonized at first, but then like she sort of like softens in a sense. Like she buys herself gifts, and like it becomes more elaborate. It becomes a thing, even though if her husband Tim never quite is comfortable with it. But that in itself, I think, is antagonistic, maybe to to their actual relationship. Yeah, but you never see it manifested. Uh, aside from her even saying once, "Yeah, we had our ups and downs," like any couple does. But in the end, it was he goes. I regret it, oh, but I also don't. Regret but sometimes, it. Yeah, See, sometimes I don't. I, I think. Get it, but I mean, that, that's the other thing is because I think that us kind of what you were saying, Scott, um, was kind of where my thinking was. But to Ian's point, that Tam was the one who was like, you know, it, it, his antagonism of the situation. But to Ian or to Steve's point, that it ultimately did bring them together. And that's not saying an antagonist can't do that, but since the main character wasn't antagonized by it. Like I said, it's a pretty close type rope, but Steve, like you, Steve, but you and Ian really, you know. It's very, very close. Funny. Like, yeah, it was the one I was wavering on the most for sure, because like it's very nuanced, like very subtle to it. But I think you guys may have convinced me, like made a good point that it's not as forceful as it could have been. And whatever, like most of the antagonistic, I guess, I don't know power is directed to Tem that who is not the main who is not the narrator so that might be enough for me to change it to a zero even though i think it's i guess maybe i'm giving i'll give themes more credit and then take points away here here's another thing sense. she's antagonized at the beginning when she first finds out she's antagonized the, and his death's approaching and she but, has 30 years in between where a living of she's <laughs> fine with it fair enough yeah, and like I think I think that might come, that's going to be enough for me to give it a zero. Is that I mean you're giving you zero too, right. and Steve as well. To, I'm going to give it a zero, see. but I think it's important that there is not. I think that it's important to this story specifically that there is not that that it's not an antagonist, right? Like I'm I'm going to sure. give it a zero, but like that's good. In not because it's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah but 
but the Steelers badly executed. Good, good, Chris. But but what Steelers said is he said it brings them together, and it's just like yeah, it didn't bring him. It brought them together quickly in the story, and then they had a full life together. You know, so like you, like like you, the point. Of, you know, I is that you know the the antagonist, so to speak, rears its ugly head for such a small part of the story, which is what yeah. you all are getting at, but. No, I'm recapping no, no. because I'm like sitting here going, okay, that all makes sense. No, like I said, like my gut reaction was to give it a one, but as we talked it out, I think that is the case. It is more nuanced. You have to look closely at it, put it more in the microscope, I guess. And I think we're agreeing upon zeros, again, not for poor execution, but because mm-hmm. of the way it's, it's done in general. Right. All right, so let's move on then to protagonists, and that will be you, E. Nameless, anti- uh, anti- uh, pr- nameless protagonist. <laughs> Uh, it was a fine job. I, I enjoyed it. I felt like I got to know her quite a bit uh, throughout this. Uh, uh, felt like a very real person. I, I like the it, conceptualization. Like, I, <clears throat> the point of this work was to show what it would be like if you knew the date of your death. And I felt like this is a real person and how they would react if in our world that was an option. And that and they worked for precisely the point uh, uh, yeah, that the uh, uh, character was made to be. Yeah, I mean, one. I mean, I think this is closely related to style just via the fact that, of course, it's a first-person narrative, so therefore you get her thoughts, like her raw reactions to everything and like, and uh, as they grow on. So yeah, like I, I was engaged with um, her as the voice that is at least uh, of the narrator. And it's going to bleed over, like cross over to style quite a bit, but I think they're both strong. And yeah, I, you, again, you, you get enough of her mindset of like what she's thinking about and how it affects her. And uh, especially with her relationship to her husband as they go on the next 30 years until the actual date and year of her assumingly, you know, pr- uh, precluded death. So I'm giving it a one in general and uh, good. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I completely agree. I think that the protagonist in this is, is quite good. Um, I think that her going through and like being privy to her thought process is Mm. really an interesting way to go through this story. And I have to give full credit for the way it's written. Uh, You know, it's going to kind of go into um, style, right? Yeah, style as well. But like uh, the the protagonist is just a enjoyable character in a in a story you know like and very I, I, well realized i guess is yeah also what I, want I think to that she isn't too much um isn't too i don't know i don't know what the word is but like no, you know she's very normal yeah and that adds to i could see her on the great british bake-off yeah, uh, like in later <laughs> years. Okay, but no, but the idea is that yeah. she's not extraordinary because this is a normal person Maybe dealing a normal life. Yeah. with a, one thing different to how our world exists. So, yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. What do you think, Chris? I have nothing to add. No. Are you giving it a one? Yep. Okay. By, by the way, Steve, you look very much like you're uh, in Nam right now. <laughs> Hoorah. Uh, Hoorah I, I heard earlier to look today, at Jerry Cal- Cal- Benatar. <clears throat> like, Every time I look over there, with like, it's, well, if love and crazy. podcasting are a battlefield, so we're good. Yeah. And if she had we're, appeared, <laughs> and anybody who's here. not, anybody who's listening to this, not watching this. Ian, Ian's got the shadow of death green screened behind him. Uh, so I don't he, have the shadow of death. I have the Steve-O has the shadow. What did I say? Ian. Said Ian. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Steve-O has a shadow of death. What are you seeing that I don't see? <laughs> I, I don't know. No, oh, yeah. About also, this. He lo- also looks like he could be out of the end of the deer hunter, too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. For the band over his head. So mm-hmm. it's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Did he mow? It is kind of distracting me, but it's hilarious. Go well, on. it's because I'm so sexy. Anyway, it's let's so move on. Freezing. <laughs> Anyway, yeah. Well, Chris also has a guitar, which is also distracting. I'm sorry. It's a bazooki. Yeah. Uh, yeah, whatever it is. I don't have a prop. Yeah. So, anyway, go. My prop is my drink. But, I mean, I don't have much to say about secondary characters because there hardly are any, like, well, I guess I'll walk that back. I suppose you'll say Tim. And, yeah, like, I almost was going to make an argument for him as protagonist, but that really is not the case. Like, I, I could not in good faith make that argument. The thing is, like, you only get his experiences via the narrator 
and like while you get some of it like it's it's only like it's a one way street of reactions i guess is the best way i can say it so i actually think tim is very important he's a good this. character like he's uh, an important but, character but, but thematically he plays a role of the person who chose not to find out but is also dealing with love and as you uh, i think you said this Bastille, the fact that he knows the day the day but not the year uh had influenced his character throughout the entire his entire life it changed his life uh That's and uh, i actually think like it's almost necessary for the story to work is to have him there it's super uh-huh. tough like yeah of course it's necessary but like is he a more than a one-dimensional character yeah, i think your argument is to say yes he is maybe to me like just not quite as I, I think our protagonist is one-dimensional. I just think they're both vehicles for the theme. <laughs> and oh. Uh, oh. and if I gave the one to the protagonist, he's also a vehicle for the theme. All right. I'm, su- I'm so undecided. So with that, one of you, Steve-O, Chris, and or Chris, go um, convince me one way or another. No, I, I, I'm coming on the side of Ian. Um, I think he's very important to this. Um, but I also think he is... Where I said previously in um, in our uh, Honey Boy video that it wasn't that secondary characters, especially in flashback, weren't important because they really um, they talked about his emotions, where he was, what he needed. In this case, this character is important because it does kind of affect her emotions, what she needs, what he needs. Good point. Um, so the thing is, the fact that he does affect the character much more than just reflecting the character and that he himself is, as Ian said, affected by everything. I, I can't not give him one. I'm definitely giving him one. All right. That's a fair point. Steve, what do you got? It's an, it's an interesting question. Um, I think that the, I don't think that either of the, I honestly, I, I was going to give supporting a zero, but I'm strongly rethinking it right now. Um, I don't think that either of those characters are one dimensional as you, like, as described, like, I think that both of them, you see growth, even if it's not like, um, mental or something. Yeah, no, I get you. Even if it's not like, uh, well, the, the thing, the thing with this story is it's weird because it's not like, you don't see the growth through like action or like, you don't see the growth through like moments of their lives. It was, it's just like you see the growth through, oh, this, that happened in the past and this is how I grew from it or whatever. Like, you know, like it's all stories told of what has happened previously. But I think that- but That's that, life. That's what you're going to say. <laughs> sure. That's what the people say. But like, uh, you know, I, I think that in, in terms of both characters, that that's the case. And I think that um, I have to give supporting one because Tem is- um, very important and 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 does have these moments of of change that you see like kind of throughout the story and that being said i think that um is an important supporting character and uh, honestly the only important supporting character but strong enough to give it a one so no, not, yeah that's all fair i'm gonna officially switch to a one I guess maybe I didn't think it through enough, or at least my again my gut instinct reaction was to be like, eh. But yeah, you're right. It's it it's not impactful enough without it being that to that degree. So yeah, we'll agree. Good job, my friends, convincing me. And uh, so let us move on to dialogue, and that will be you, Stevo. Oh, dialogia. Yep. Um, is it the classic conundrum of whether or not internal monologue counts? No, 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 no. There's actual dialogue in this. Sure. I mean, there certainly is. Yeah, it's going. Cool. Um, is it good? Nah, not really. It's okay. <laughs> it's fine. Um, there's no moments that really stick out to me in terms of dialogue. I honestly, this is one thing that like I almost wish it was only internal dialogue, like in this story. Um, it's all just fine, just just day to day, bog bog standard as we like to say on this mm. podcast. Um, I think I'm gonna give it a zero. I really don't have much to say about the dialogue. It's yeah. it, 
backs up the story, but it's not like there's no standout moments to me. Maybe some of you guys can. I read this a couple hours ago. Go on. And I thought it was all internal monologue. <laughs> yeah. No, it's only backing him up is what you're saying. Exactly. There's there's actually a lot of dialogue. I'm looking through it right now. There's actually a lot of dialogue in it. Right, but it's all very, like, like in quotes, dialogue. <laughs> no, I get you mean. I forgot that. I mean, I know, I know there's a bunch of it, but, like, I think, as you said, Sivo, so uh, one, before I officially answer, what's your take on it, Chris? I, this is tricky because there is dialogue, but, it, but, it, but, but if it's a rec- if it's a if it's her telling the story then she's an unreliable narrator with regard to the dialogue. So maybe, but I see the, the, dialogue, thing. the question's not, is there a dialogue? It's, is the dialogue. No, no, I'm, I'm trying to talk through it because no, because this, you know, we, we always have this thing where dialogue, if it's a first person narrative, blah, 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 not we yet, can dude. make exceptions here. This is my whole point is this is a case where it kind of walks right down the middle of our middle. Um, so she's either boring in real life or boring in her imagination. Well, at least no, recollections of telling you of like what was said in actual conversations. No, sure. I, I, I mean, it's funnier uh, uh, upon reflection not that you say no, no, it. No, like, and, and I want to be clear. I'm not saying that looks bad, but it's not like. Yeah, no, I get it. Steve, it, sure. it might as well have been internal monologue. And like that would it's have been. Very matter, it's very matter. It's very matter. That means that I'm not. To me, it was. So. No, I'm going to say something that I was. If, if it was only. As I thought it was, only internal dialogue, I was like, I thought I got a really good sense of her voice and her as a unique character. That's what I was going to give it a one. But because I forgot that there was actual dialogue in this, <laughs> uh, yeah. I have to I, and I have to transfer that one over to style and give a zero to dialogue. Mm-hmm. I think I'm pretty much in the same boat. So uh, what's your official uh, score over there, Chris? Exactly what Ian same said. Thing. Yeah, I think that's pretty well said. And I think we're all doing that. So with that, actually, Chris, style. I really like the style of this. Um, the it had a theme, it had a story, and it lasted as long as it needed to be to um, to convey that theme, to, to convey the you know what she wanted to talk about. I think it's very strong, but very simple. Um, I often use the analogy where like you know you can get a burger anywhere, but if it's a good burger, yes, this yes. is a good burger. Sure. <laughs> I mean, go good ahead. analogy. I gave my opinion in uh, dialogue. I thought I got a good sense it was of her clear voice. That, yeah. I mean, I agree. Like, I think actually on top of this, like, so this is not an insult. This is a, actually a, a very, a compliment. It re- and without it being like a, a clone of either, it reminded me of somewhere like something between like a Phil K. Dick story and a Ray Badbury story. Like something like that. It has, this, has a very nice like dreamlike sort of poetic like, somewhat all like soft alternate reality to it and i was yeah, kind of like, getting shades of shirley jackson too yeah i mean like yeah like sure right any like in in a very broad way chris like it's it's in that vein yeah. and i think that's a strength of it i enjoyed the style quite a bit i thought there were some very nice like not overly ne- un- not overly unnecessarily poetic stuff but really well f- an excellent flow to it and that kept me going along through the story so Maybe along with themes, I think style is probably one of the strongest points of this story, and I have to give Helen Phillips a lot of credit because it it was very well laid out, and it just dragged you, like not dragged you along, it kept you going along. You wanted to know what's happening next. You wanted to see like how her life turned out, etc. Like, oh shit, now it's counting down to the actual year, the year's coming up, etc. So yeah, I think it, it did a good job of that for me, and I'm giving it a pretty strong one on the style front. Uh, I, I completely agree with you guys. I think that the style is really good. Um, actually there, it's funny that you mentioned a bunch of, uh, famous like sci-fi authors. Mm. Uh, I mean, I can't help one, it, but like, yeah, perhaps, but perhaps the one that was the closest to this, that did a short story, the closest to this. And I, I thought that we had all read this, uh, together, but I, I, it turns out it was just me. Uh, there's a short story called Anyways. to be or not to be, which is like, the number two, the letter B, the letter R, zero, which stands for not, and then uh, the number two and, and the letter B, uh, written by Kurt Vonnegut, um, which is maybe the closest thing to this and probably like a, a I would guess one of the, um, one, one of the reasons or, you know, uh, references for this. Uh, and, and it's actually mentioned in the, in the is it really? intro, 
Mm-hmm. And I think it, I think it actually oh, yeah. has given a link to the, to the short story, but like, so are we putting that on the list? I think, we, yeah, I, I honestly, I, <laughs> I read it a while it. ago. I, th- I, for some reason I thought we had done it, but like, I, I would do that any day. It's, it's very close, but it's like, you know, Vonnegutian is that <laughs> Vonnegutian? <laughs> but like, but but like, um, it's it it does have a very similar feel to it to that, where the idea of that story is like you go into this like v- bureaucratic place, find out, uh, or or decide whether or not you want to like live or not. I mean, I I won't I won't give away too much about it, but like. It's it's this entire it, it's 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 this very similar thing and like it feels like a Vonnegut that Vonnegut short story and I I I, I definitely got like the same kind of vibes from it and mm. and that's never bad when you can <laughs> when you can approximate Kurt Vonnegut's story you know mm-hmm. um, so yeah I'm gonna give this a strong one for style I really loved reading it it it's a short story it, you know it probably took me ten minutes to read but it felt even shorter than that because it, I just like got pulled right through it and yeah. uh, I'm going to give it a strong one. Yeah, Chris. Oh, I'm giving it one. Yep. All right. So my final thought on that is just, I'll re- jot it down. You guys remember we, a story we did review Steve O was called you disappearing. If mm-hmm. anybody remembers that mm-hmm. one. And I got sort of some vague vibes from that too. Yeah. Like sort of like, again, vaguely like it's set in real life, but there's like, just a bit of sur- surreality to it. Like you have this one difference that characters within this world can experience. And I thought that was, a, a, again, just a positive thing and uh, another evidence for one. Yep. So we're all doing that and uh, bring us on home. E you recommend the knowers or knowers? Sure. <laughs> I believe it's the knowers. Is it just, uh, is it the knowers? I just have knowers, but either way I, I wrote knowing at first, but that's a terrible John Cusack movie or Nick. Cage movie <laughs> or something. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it's my pick technically, and granted, it was random, randomized. But yes, I think it's very much worth a read. Like you said, Sivo, it's pretty quick; you can get through it. And I think it's it has something. It's there's much more substance to it than perhaps and a number of other random things you could have chosen, or even things that we have done on the show earlier. So yeah, I do recommend it officially. Uh, I recommend it. It's a very quick read. I mean, um, even for you, it, even for me, yeah. Um, <laughs> No, it, it, it's a nice little read. It really is. And then, you know, it, it brings up a lot of, um, I had many thoughts while, after I read this, you know, sure. it, it's, it's a good, it's worthwhile. Yeah. I, I think that it's, it's, a, it's definitely worth a read. It's very interesting for all the reasons we've already discussed. It's short and it feels shorter than it is. Um, because it's, because I think it's well-written and uh, what are the reasons you need? Read it. Yeah, I think that sets it pretty well. So I'll recap it. Uh, we give it all seven. So that's, of course, seven, even though I actually edited them up and divided them because I'm terrible at math. But yeah, we give it two to plots. We took one point away from plot. It's strong, but not the strongest. We decided on zeros for tag and zeros for dialogue. Otherwise, it's a pretty damn strong, very well written, excellently crafted story. So there you go. It's a pass. Check it out. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, I've been Scott Thurlow, and my death date is to be determined. I've been here with Chris Morgan. Live long and prosper. And Stephen DeMosi. Or don't. <laughs> and Jonathan Ian Manzer. Bye-bye. And we'll see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>